Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Yes, God. We just welcome the wonderful Holy Spirit, the presence of the Lord, wherever you are watching. He's filled this studio where we are, but there's no distance in the Holy Spirit. So right where you are, just welcome him. You know, when we were together last week, we talked about Paul and Silas and how there was a slave girl that brought her masters much, much money, and they gave her an assignment. They sent her to follow Paul's ministry around wherever he went. In the natural, it looked like she was promoting them and saying good things about them. These are men of the Most High God who show us the way of salvation. But we saw she had a python spirit, a spirit of divination, literally trying to wrap herself around and strangle the life out of Paul and Silas's ministry. Well, Paul, of course, took that for a number of days and then he cast that demon out of her and because of that the people got stirred up and they end up throwing Paul and Silas into prison. So I want to pick up that story in Acts 16 down in verse 25 with you today. It says, but at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Now, the Bible says that they were put in the inner stocks. So they mustn't have been, they weren't singing, Oh, how I love Jesus. They must have been singing loud enough that all the other prisoners heard them. You know, sometimes when it's a midnight hour in your life, that's the time you just got to break out and sing to the Lord at the top of your lungs. And then verse 26 says, And suddenly, can I tell you, the God we serve is a God of the suddenly. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all doors were open and everyone's chains and bands were loosed. Do you need some things shaken loose from your life? If you will become a worshiper, if you will even lift your hands today and welcome the presence of God, I believe God will shake the very foundations loose from those things that are trying to hold you. God will open doors for you that no man can close. And like he loosed Paul and Silas from their chains, he will loose you from the chains that are binding you. Amen. Our God is all about liberty and freedom. The enemy wants to hold you captive and keep you bound, but the anointing of the Holy Amen. Spirit is here today to set you free, Amen. to break you loose. Then it says in verse 27, in the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, 
supposing that the prisoners had fled, he drew his sword and he was about to kill himself. But Paul called him with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm, <laughs> we're still all here. Then he called for a light. He ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved and your household. Wow. Can we declare 2018 to be a year of household salvation? Yes. Yes. What a miracle this was. You know, the greatest miracle anyone could ever receive is to give their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was interesting that what started out to be something very negative, it, they, Paul and Silas are in prison. It's midnight. But as they began to sing and praise, the Lord showed up right in that prison, broke the foundations open, opened doors, broke the chains off of them, and God used that, seized that opportunity for this Philippian jailer to become born again. And not only did he become born again, he takes Paul and Silas back to his house. They share the gospel with all of his family and all of his household becomes born again. Why don't you call? And if you've got a member of your household who needs to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Just let the prayer partner know their first name. They're going to pray with you. You know, it's God's will that not only do we go to heaven, but all of our families and households as well. I always say the next best thing to go into heaven is taking somebody with you. Why don't you call and let's declare this new year to be a year of family and household salvation. If you need set free from something that's keeping you bound, some foundation that you need shaken loose from, why don't you call right now, 888-665-4483. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe in miracles. We believe there is nothing, nothing that is too hard for our God. As Pastor Meyer was leading us in worship, the presence of the Lord, the anointing's here. Amen. He's here, right? Yes, he is. And when he shows up, anything could happen. God cannot show up and just nothing happen. If you encounter the Holy Ghost today, His Spirit today, if you allow Him, you take that word that was taught to you today and embrace it as your own, it is impossible for God not to show up in your life. Believe God. Believe God. Somebody said, God, show up and show off. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Well, you know, like we said, right in the beginning and at midnight, you know, a lot of times the greatest breakthroughs that ever happen in a person's life is at midnight. Come on. You know, that's when the doors get open. It's not at 7 o'clock in the morning. It's not 8 o'clock in the morning. It's late in that's the right, midnight brother. hour. Fred Hammond sang a song a long time ago. Late in the midnight hour, God is going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. So I want to encourage you right now, even as Pastor Gary just said, call in right now, 888-665-4483. I believe that as we begin to praise and magnify the go. Lord there in our midnight hour, that the doors go. are going to open in this year for your life 
and that things that have held you in bondage and held your family in bondage, those shackles are going to fall off in this season. Even as we're praising God yeah. and worshiping God, yeah. it's yeah. amazing how the Bible says your praise stills the avenger. So even right now where you are, just lift up your hands and begin to praise, praise him God. and magnify Hallelujah. him for the doors that are opening Hallelujah. for you, the chains that are falling off, Thank and for you. your family members to be saved in 2018 Jesus. in Jesus' name. Don, it's, he was sharing that the Lord put a word in my spirit that somebody's prison is addiction. Mm. They're, they're addicted to drugs, maybe even to prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. that, that's so prevalent today. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they're just overwhelmed. They're, they're feeling hopeless. Mm -hmm. But God's, God's the only one that has their answer. That's Not right. man, but God wants to break them out Thank of that you, prison Jesus. today. Hallelujah. Well, when you think about what happened with Paul and Silas, kind of if we back it up just a little bit, they were obedient to God and the story that you told about casting the demons out of the slave girl, that turned up the city's anger yes. and they got put in prison. Well, they didn't just get put in jail, they got beaten. They got, they got severely punished. They were trying to teach them a lesson, so they were hurting. They were, they were in pain. Their punishment, their circumstances was painful circumstances. So they could have went to jail and laid in the corner, put a blanket on each other if there was such one around. Because that says they were in stocks. Their That's feet right. were in stocks and they were in, in, the, in the inner prison. So they were bound up. That's right. You can't get any more bound up than they were. And they were, I imagine, bleeding and bruised and just feeling really like you just got beaten, you know? And what was their choice? See, they had a choice at that moment. They had a choice. They, they could have started feeling sorry for themselves. Well, look, God, I did what you told me to do. Now look where I'm at. Mm -hmm. This is turning into a nightmare. Well, what did they choose to do? They chose to pray and to sing and to worship and praise God. Come on. Now, they just didn't choose to do it in their hearts. You know, sometimes, like, well, I'm just praising the Lord in my heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that's okay. In my car, I'm driving along. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. That's not what they chose to do. They did it out loud. They did it so loud that everybody in the jail heard it too. The other prisoners heard it. So they were testifying to the goodness of God in the midst of the worst circumstances they had ever probably ever been in. Locked up, beat up, and put in, put in the hole. And they were praising the Lord. So you feel locked up. That person on, 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 on prescription drugs feels just exactly, you know, you know exactly what it feels like because you are locked up and put up and then you're in a hole. And without that little pill, your life feels like it is worthless. And you are addicted to that, to that drug and you don't want to be addicted to that drug. You don't know how you got addicted to it. it. You walked into this thing blindly. Maybe you got it from a doctor and it just took over your life. Now maybe you're using heroin because you can't afford the little pill anymore. I don't know what your circumstances are, but I can tell you what, you're just like Paul and Silas. You are bound and in chains and you can't do it yourself. They couldn't do it themselves. They were locked down and they were hurting. You're locked down and you're hurting. But when they started praising God, when they started receiving the spiritual revelation of who God really is, then God suddenly shook the place. He shook the foundation of the prison. Yes. He didn't just shake the bars. He didn't take a couple across the bars. He shook the entire foundation of that, of that, of that building, shook it to, to such an extent it said it was a great earthquake, a great earthquake. Yeah. And that earthquake caused the doors to open and the chains to fall off. And then what did they do? They didn't run out. They stayed at peace. They're at peace because here comes the jailer. So where, here, where are you at? You need your foundation shook by God. And how do you do that? Enter into praise, worship, and prayer. Can't do it yourself. That's why we're here. 888-665-4483. Let's pray together. Let's praise together and let's ask God to suddenly shake your foundation. Don, I, I got this picture. Here, here's Paul and Silas. Their hands are in stocks. Their feet are in stocks. I don't know if their head was in a stock too. Yep. And Paul leads over and he says to Silas, hey, Silas, what? Let's sing. He goes, what? <laughs> yeah, right. Are you crazy? Yeah. Sing? sing. 
Yes, because God uses the foolish Come on. things Come on. of this there world go, to confound the wise. That's We're right. sitting here telling you, call a prayer partner. We're sitting here telling you, come on, lift your hands in worship. We're sitting That's here right. telling come on, you, come on, come believe on. God. Come and on. you're saying, what? What? <laughs> Are you crazy? That's but right. it worked. It, it worked. Amen. And if it worked for Paul and Silas, it will work for mm. you yeah. because God is the same yes. today in 2018 yeah. on. On. as right. he was in Thank the book Lord. of Acts. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel the foundation starting to shake. Amen. Amen. There's a rumble in the house. Amen. The rumble on the foundation. Freedom is one phone call, one step of faith away. Hallelujah. Call us. Call us right now. Because why, why would we do this? Because we love you. We want to see you set free. Amen. And, and then, yes. the, then the jailer yes. who, who was the one who beat him, I mean, that's probably who beat him was the jailer or right. somebody that worked for the jailer. He was f set free, himself was set free, yes. and then his family got set free. Why did his family get saved? Why did they get saved? Because they saw what God did. It wasn't his words that set them free. It was his actions. He, and his, when the dad came in and said, look what, God, look what happened to these guys. He took these guys over to their house and the whole family went, wow. That's what, when you talk about signs and wonders, Pastor, Amen. that's a sign and a wonder. Amen. Because yeah. that family went, whatever did that, I want that. Amen. So Amen. when your life gets free, brother, from that, from that drug and you're shaken and you're now proclaiming the victory that you have now walked in and start to enjoy, your family and your friends, those around you go, what happened to you? You can share them that your foundation got shook and God set you free. So call us right now, 888-665-4483. Yeah. And let's stand together and let's watch God move in a mighty way in your life because he loves you and he wants your life to be free. Where the sun sets free is free yes. indeed. Not partly free. That's right. Not free on Saturdays, free mm -hmm. indeed. Amen. You know, as you're talking about Paul and Silas, I, I'm thinking about people that are out there that you've done the right things and you've gotten the wrong results and you think that God has forgotten about you. But I'm thinking about another man named Joseph who had did the right thing when Potiphar's wife wanted to lay with him, wanted to sleep with him, and he ran out and found himself in prison. There are people out there right now that are watching. That you, th you think God has forgotten about you. You're saying, I've done the right things. I did what God asked me to do, but I'm still in debt. You sowed your seed in the cornerstone, but you're still in debt, and you're wondering, when is my time going to come? This is the time that your praise is going to change your season. Your worship is going to shift your season. I believe that as you'll just begin to magnify the Lord and begin to glorify God, he is going to take you out of your prison suddenly. In one day, Joseph went from Come being on. in the prison to being the second in command over the largest nation in the planet right. at that time in Egypt. Right. I believe this is a scene that God is saying, I'm going to accelerate your life just like he did for Paul and Silas, just like he did for Joseph. He's getting ready to do for somebody else. So don't you quit. Don't you throw in the towel. Amen. God has not forgotten about you. Right. Your best and your blessed days are still out in front of you. And 2018 is going to be the greatest year that you have ever <laughs> seen. In your life. Yeah, amen. There, there, there are some of you, you, you've gotten some, some pronouncements over your life by a doctor, by a physician. They, they've told you, you know, this is what you're dealing with. This is what you have. And I want to tell you, we just break yes. every yes. word yes. curse yes. over your life. The yes. book of Isaiah says, whose report yes. will you believe? I believe the report of the Amen. Lord that with and by the stripes of Jesus Christ that he took on his own body at Calvary, you were and you are the healed. Somebody is watching and you've got ulcers, real bad, bad stomach problems, problems in your digestive tract, and you feel like it's holding you in stocks. You don't have the desire to praise. You don't have the desire to worship. Pastor Meyer, the Bible doesn't say, I feel. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Amen. God is moving right now for you. I, I, I just thought back as you, were, you all were talking, nine years ago this time, 
I was in therapy because my blood sugar level had gone up to 1,100. Ooh. I didn't know anything about that, what that meant. Mm -hmm. And in that process, I could not drive, I uh, got vertigo, I could not stand up, I was walking sideways and backwards. And long story short, and God, God raised me up. Come on. God raised me up. Shook the foundation. He shook the foundation, Woo. brought everything back down. The ophthalmologist who checked my eyes, she took a picture and looked and said, come here, I need you to look at this. I didn't know what she wanted. I went over to the screen and she said, look at this and look at these, these vessels, blood vessels back here. All of these should be broken. You're a miracle. You are a miracle. I said, Amen. okay. Amen. Amen. But I thank God. The therapist, the, the physical therapist, after I got done said, I can tell you now, we did not think that you were going to recover from this because your brain took such a hit. Goodness. And I thank God I'm in my right mind, clothed oh, and in my right mind. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I thank God because God is a miracle yes, worker. Is. God is the one who says, live, you shall live and not die. So I thank God. Amen. He has purpose for my life. He has purpose for our lives. He has purpose for your life. Don't you give up. He has purpose for you. And if he did it for you, he can do it for Amen. them. Come on. Yes, oh my yes, God. yes. yes. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Well, I just, I have a testimony here from uh, a young lady who called in. I won't say your name, but uh, I had been given a word of knowledge for, for her that someone had a pain in the right side of their back. And when she heard that, test that word of knowledge, just as pastor has been giving out some words of knowledge, let me just take a second here. A word of knowledge like that is a supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. And for the purposes of communicating to the person who hears it, a fact or a, a condition that they need to know about. Right. So in that regard, if God's moving, and in this, this one there was a pain in the right side, then this, this, this young lady had to hear that and then she had to say, okay, God, that's me, I receive it. You see, yes. you can hear it, but if you don't receive it, it passes you by. Think about it like that. So she reached out and received it and she was instantaneously and miraculously healed. So praise God, that's what happens. So when you hear a word of knowledge, like from when, when the gifts work through any of us in that regard, that's what God's doing. In, in the bottom line, God loves you so much. That's right. He knows you so well. He knows what that's he right. need to say that you need to hear so you can receive what he wants to give you. See, because it comes from him. So he wants to give you this touch. So if that's you, then you receive it as a gift from the Lord. And then with the other condition that you'll share it. Because the Lord doesn't want to give us gifts that we don't share with others. That's some gifts are for sharing. Well, because so, what, what's the devil always say? Oh, God doesn't care about you. God's forgotten you. You know, God's too busy. God's overlooked. And then you get a word of knowledge and it's like, here's the Lord, That's the right. God of the universe picks you out. Right. You talk about how much he loves you. Right. He mm. pinpoints exactly what's yes. going on in your life. Yes. And all you got to do is respond as Dawn said That's and right. say yes. Just say yes, I receive it. I receive it. Well, the Lord's just dropped into my spirit. One of, one of you watching is having a tremendous difficulties with your car. All this cold w weather, and it could be many of you, have impacted your car to such an extent you can't even drive it. Your car won't, won't run. The Lord wants you to know that he's going to give you wisdom to know what to do about your car. Come on. And uh, you'll be able to get back into your car and get back into your transportation mode. So God cares enough to know that you don't have a ride. And he provided you that ride in the first place, but now he wants to show you how to get that ride back on the road. Right. So God's going to give you wisdom on how that car is going to get back together, whether it's a battery or whether it's a radiator or whatever it is. The Lord hasn't told me that, but he's telling me to tell you, don't be discouraged. Don't, don't give up. Just keep pushing forward. God's going to make a way for your car to get back into service to you. So receive it. So here's that truth. If that's you, and your car has been hit by this weather hard, then just say, God, that's me. I receive that in Jesus' name. Show me how to do it. See, that's the interactive, Pastor uh, uh, Jay. God plants the seed, 
The seed takes root and the crop is grown. This is a seed that's going to take root. Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So when those words go out, it's meant to just ignite your faith that you can link up with it. So if he's called that out, call in right now. 888-665-4483 and let that faith just begin to germinate in your spirit. And it's amazing what one little word of faith in our hearts can do because once that word gets going on in us and you start giving God praise, then a praise leads to one thing, then it leads to a hand clap, then it leads to a foot tap. And before you know it, you've broken through and all the discouragement and the heaviness is lifted off of your life. And when you can praise God in advance, you know you already have the breakthrough. That's, That's, That's it. right. That's it. When, when you had mentioned about vertigo you had battled, the Lord said there, there's a number of people watching. That's the symptoms you have. You have vertigo right now, and it just really, really, I've never had it, but I hear it just can make things topsy-turvy and upside down. But I believe the Lord is healing. Yes, Would you just yes, send the yes. word of healing? for ver yes. Come on, if he did it for you, he can do it for them. That's right. Thank God you, Lord. Is at work right now. Thank you, Father. Receive it right now. Ah, yes, Father, in yes. the name of Jesus, Jesus, let them receive this. Yes, God. Concerning the vertigo. Go. Yes. Concerning the hit that yes. their brains have taken. Yes. Or the, the, the balance is just off because of the, the granules in their ears just being out of whack. So, God, I speak restoration right now. Do it for your glory, God. Now, the thing is, you receive it. Receive it and do something you couldn't do before. Yes. Amen. After God did what he did for me, I was back up on ladders, <laughs> which I couldn't do before. And I thank him. I thank him for what he did. He's doing it for you. Amen. Amen. Come on, folks. Call that number, 888-665-4483. Remember, if you have an unsaved loved one, a family member, give that prayer partner their first name. Dawn, yes. there's somebody else that they've just had high blood pressure. Oh boy. And God, right oh now, we just speak to yes. that pressure yes. to be regulated, yes. normalized, yes. Yes. and healed yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe there's some Father. people out there as well that you're watching right now and you have some financial stressors in your life and you've gotten those financial stressors because you have followed the Lord. You've been following the Lord, but the devil has hit you in your finances. God wants me to speak to you today and tell you this is your year to declare debt freedom Come in on. your life. Declare it and claim it in the name of Jesus. Call in right now, 888-665-4483 and ask someone to come into agreement with you and say, this is my year to be debt free in my life. Amen. Well, in, that, in that same light, brother, because I'm, I'm, I'm right in that same light with you, that there are many people watching right now who have pressure and strife, strife and anxiety in your life, fear in your life because of an uncertain future. Uncertain about your finance. This is in the financial realm. It, because you have a job that you don't want to have a job, you aren't liking the job you have now, you're just working there because it's a job, but it's not where you want to be and it doesn't pay you what you need to, for it to pay you. I, I, I want to encourage you, there's another job for you. God's got something better for you Come on. Come up, coming right ahead. Amen. You're going Amen. to reach out now. you got to reach Amen. out. But Amen. Listen for the opportunity. Seek the Lord's wisdom on the opportunity. And there are people who have lost their job that you're not working. Same for you. There's an opportunity in the next seven days Come Seven on. days, Come on. if you will s diligently search and seek in prayer, I'm not talking about necessarily going online and trying to find a job, you can do that too, but diligently search and seek in prayer and maybe some fasting, mix some fasting in this next seven Amen. days where you start fine tuning your spirit. I will promise you the Lord will give you revelation on how Amen. to get on that path that Pastor Jay's talking about to get more income be better stewards of what the Lord's trusted you with and see debt start to go away. Stress goes down, fear goes away. You rely on God, put your faith on Him. In the next seven days, if you'll Amen. step out, they will, there will be the beginning 
of a new life for you in 2018. Yes. And at the end of this 2018, you'll look back at this year and say, look how much God has changed. <laughs> my circumstances Amen. and my world is totally different because I took little steps. Now here's what happens though, because when you take a little step and you see the, oh wow, look what God's doing. You want to take another step, then you want to take another step. That's what you learn when you start learning about giving. You give a little bit, just as a, okay, 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 I've heard it so many times, I'm going to give, I'm going to give. And then the Lord blesses, and then you, okay, I'm going to give. And then you get it into the, the routine of giving. Then you say, well, I'm going to try tithing. I've never done tithing, t -t -t tithing. <laughs> yeah. Then you do that and you go, oh, look what the Lord's done. And then you said, then you pretty soon you're giving and you're tithing both. You're giving offerings and tithe. And that because you've learned the secret that the devil has kept from you for so long that there's a blessing in it. And so the same thing with the word, reading the word, same thing for fasting, the same thing for sharing your faith, same thing for exercising your gifts and your talent, little bit by little bit, and you'll get on a glide path of the supernatural and the Lord will take you places, my brother and sister, in this year, yes you, yes you, to a place that you could never imagine that you'd go in such a fast amount of time. You spent all these years hoping, now you can start to see it being manifest if you will step forward in faith. So call us and let us step with you, let us stand together. Let's stand together in partnership in ministry Put, put seed into the good work here at Cornerstone, the good ground of Cornerstone, telling the, the good news of Jesus to so many people. Our, our reach is growing. Our audiences are growing. We're, we need partners to stand with us. So why don't you invest in us and experiment with God's truth that way? He's a God of his word. Trust him. Take him. That's the only place in the word that I can think of, pastors. i got three pastors where God says, test me. Test me. God's actually saying, hey, big boy, <laughs> come on and test me. <laughs> God wants us to walk in faith. So this is your day for moving out in the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know, Don, when you had mentioned fasting, I know a lot of churches and ministries begin the new year with 21 days of prayer and fasting. Why don't you try that? There are certain spirits and strongholds, right. Jesus said, that are only broken, right. only come out by prayer and fasting. Why don't you pray about how you can fast, what you can fast, when you can fast. It will make a difference. I always like to say fasting, it's like it sharpens the ax right, for you to be able to cut the enemy's roots out of your life. So why don't you do that? And then make sure you get your communion elements together because we want to have people join us for Holy Communion in just a few moments. Just in a few minutes. Well, in that fasting, on that fasting topic, after we go through January, in preparation for Valentine's Day, we're going to conduct a cornerstone real life fast for our family and our friends. So we're gonna actually usher in a time of press, a fasting us together as a family. We'll give you instructions and directions and we'll do it in unity together for 21 days as we as we go into that love month, into the love month. We decide not to do it in January because a lot of churches are doing fasting and prayer in January. And so we wanna do it in February. So watch for that. You'll hear more about it on Real Life. And as, as, as and if, you, if you don't get our newsletter, call us and we want you to have the newsletter because that's where a lot of this information gets written down. But yeah, it's time. Let's, let's, uh, let's start the communion cere ceremony together, Pastor. And Don, just before we do that, you know, that Philippian jailer, he approached Paul and Silas and said, what must I do to be saved? I believe we've got some folks watching. We've got new viewers all the time. Maybe you're watching and you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you might be sitting there saying, this kind of stuff is new to me. I'm not used to a program like this. And maybe you're watching and something is stirring in you. And you're asking, how can I have a relationship? Mm -hmm. Pastor, this isn't a religion. This is a relationship. Yeah. Would, right. would you Amen. share with somebody Amen. how they could have a relationship? Well, it's a real simple prayer. All you have to do is pray this prayer and mean it with your heart, and God will do exactly what it is that we ask. Would you pray this prayer that your own ears can hear it? Say, Father in heaven, Father in heaven I thank you today, I thank you today for rescuing me 
for rescuing me from a life of sin. From a life of sin. Thank you. Thank you for sending your son to die for me and rise again. Rise again. That I might have eternal life. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I receive you now. I receive you. You are my savior. You are my savior. I will live for you. I will live for you as you empower me. As you and show me how. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer, pick up that phone right now. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost going out right now, the love of God, 888-665-4483. Tell our prayer partners that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. We want to give you some information and help you get moving on your new walk with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, that is the perfect entry point for you and I now to receive the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. So if you have a cracker, a piece of bread, a wafer of some kind, take it. Hallelujah. If you have a juice or something liquid in a cup, Lord, bless these elements yes. and bless us, your people, as we enter in to this covenant with you. You said as often as we would do this to do it in remembrance of you. Yes. So we now take our bread and we eat of it. Be healed in the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. And as Christ lifted his cup, we lift our cup. Take and drink of it now and be washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Don, his presence is here yes. without a doubt. Presence is hovering over us right now. Such a wonderful experience to be in God's presence. Yes. To be in a place where He has manifested His peace and His love. That's what the Bible says when it me means when it says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, yes, sir. will keep your hearts and minds safe. We need to keep our minds safe, brothers and sisters because our minds are under attack. That's where the devil hits us, it's in our minds. Our bodies are neutral, they go where your mind tells it to go. It's a vessel, it's like your car. The car doesn't go anywhere unless you get in and tell it where to go. So our minds are under attack and we wanna have our minds safe. It's that peace of God that keeps our minds safe. And a, a sacrifice, uh, uh, experiencing the sacrament of, of uh, communion is a holy experience. It's a divine experience. It's when the Holy Spirit anoints these, these natural things and makes that into a supernatural experience. Healings happen in communion. Deliverances happen in communion. Lives are changed. Hearts are touched in communion. That's why we do it on every one of our weekend edition programs. We're always gonna do communion as long as the Lord will allow. So in advance for the next weekend, why don't you get your elements ready in, in, in advance. It's like the lady who sent in her testimony. It's this, this program's her favorite program because she doesn't have anywhere to share communion. That's why we do this, pastors, is so that we have that unity, that, that intimacy with God in the, in the act of, of communion. Jesus said, as often as you do this, right. do this in remembrance of me. That's not just a fond memory. That doesn't mean do this in, in, in retrospect to what I did. No, do this because what he did is continuing. That's a continuation verb. Do this in continuing what I've done. So we keep doing what he did when he did the, the communion. And that's why we share it together. Well, you know, I, I got a, in, in my position, I get emails from all kinds of lovely people. And sometimes I get calls and emails from people who are not so lovely that aren't so happy with what we do on Cornerstone. And that's okay. I, I, I'm happy to receive all the communication, good, bad, or indifferent. But this particular one wasn't bad, but she was insulted because 
on the New Year's Eve program. You know, we did a New Year's Eve program. I'm going to, I'm going to give God some honor here. We, I, I flipped around, I watched. We were the only television network in the America, Christian television network wow. in America, who had a New Year's Eve program wow. that was that was celebrating the new year and the entering of a new year. We called it Shout in the New Year, and we were giving God the glory, and we had communion then in the new year, right after the, the counting down, the countdown. But she, I had told on that program, I had, early on we had music and worship and such, I told people, I said, now get your stuff ready for communion. Well, that word stuff bothered her because she thought that was kind of slang, and we were referring to a holy event. You know, and it shouldn't have been so much slang. It should have been more holy, you know. And I wrote back to her and I apologized for my miscommunication to her. But I, what I was trying to do is I was trying to tell people who aren't really connected to the church, who really aren't used to doing communion, maybe it's something totally different for them, and try to make it where it's more informal. Because I don't think it needs to be a formal thing. I came in through the, grew up in a Catholic church. It was very much a formal Right. And I think there is a holy, high, 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 holy celebration that uh, that I've grew up with. So I understand that, and so I hope you guys understand. When we have communion here, we can do that as Christians. You can have communion, brother and sister, at home by yourself. You don't have to have a priest or a pastor there with you. You and Jesus can have communion together. And I highly recommend it actually for you to do that. Spend time with him, intimate time with him. Break the bread, drink the, 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 the juice and fellowship, sup with him. That's the way the Lord wants us to be. Without a doubt. It's not a, it's not, it's not a religious service. It's a personal en engagement with God. He wants you to have that engagement. Fasting, prayer, communion, getting engaged in praying in the spirit. These are all valuable things for us. Without these things, Pastor Jay, we don't have the power to be successful Christians. That's right, you know what I love when we take communion, I always like to go back to the 23rd Psalm. It said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And even as Brother Don was talking, I just feel today that God wants somebody out there just to receive the peace of God. Even as we're in 2018, some of you are scared, you're anxious, you're fearful, but I break that spirit of fear and anxiety right now, and I release the spirit of peace over your life, the shalom of God over your life, over your ministry, Hallelujah. over your marriage, over your children, that you will not walk in fear, and God has a table prepared for you, a bountiful table of 2018, full of blessing. Even in the low times, He's going to bless you, He's going to increase you, that no matter what weapon is formed against you, you will prosper and you will be in hell. So receive the peace of God today. Receive it over your mind, receive it over your heart, receive it over your life today. Yes. And I thank you, Father, that you're sealing thank them you, now Jesus. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Lord, we pray for everyone that's called in a, a loved one. Yes, God. That needs to come to Christ, draw them right now. Yes, Lord. We pray to the Lord of the Lord harvest. Of Put laborers yes, in the path yes, yes. of our unsaved Lord loved ones that they will share the gospel, yes. the good news, yes. and we claim household yes. Yes, salvation yes, yes. in this new year of 2018 Hallelujah. in Hallelujah. Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us, pastors. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for being part of our family. Thank you for being one of our, our, our partners if you financially support this ministry or prayerfully support this ministry. I, I want to leave you with a word, though. Listen, let's not lose sight that our God reigns. Amen. He yeah, is sovereign you. and yes, he, he is does. almighty. So when you turn on the news and you hear this thing, there may be a nuclear war in Korea. And, you know, there maybe uh, we might be in a global warming and, we, you know, maybe there's going to be this giant uh, earthquake to fly. Forget all of those things. Know this. Our God reigns in the midst of the, whatever happens, He is our God and He is faithful and He will protect us, deliver us, and bless us in Jesus' name. So receive that blessing. Do not fear in Jesus' name. Hope and trust in Jesus' name. Let's go with Sister Myra as she sings, just perfectly blessed.